you're going to want to start with a nice square piece of steel and hit it a bunch of times with a hammer. Or your face. I don't really care which, but I'd recommend the hammer. Eventually, you'll start to notice the square piece of steel will begin to fan out. That's a good thing. You're going to want that, because it'll form the back of your crossbow bolt arrowhead. This is taking a while. Once you have it nice and fanned out, you're gonna wanna start making a cone. I decided to hit against the end of this piece of railroad track, but uh, there's probably better ways to do it. I decided I wanted the top part of the cone to be a little narrower, so I'm hitting it with the back of the hammer. I like using a nice pair of needle nose pliers to kind of even everything out. This is also really nice for when you're forging the tip of it. You know, just use your needle nose pliers to take it in and out of the forge so you're not, you know, crushing the cone with your uh, tongs. Now you're gonna wanna cut off the end. I would recommend a hot cut tool, but I'm too cheap to buy one of those, so I just hit at the end of an anvil. Once you have it cut, you start to, uh, you know, make a nice point in it. This is completely optional, but if you really want it to stick into something, it's highly recommended. Now you just have to make sure that everything's straight. This is highly recommended so your crossbow bolt actually flies straight and not off to one side. I've had that happen, it makes it hard to aim. Now you're gonna wanna sand everything to a nice point. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using a belt sander, and my cameraman decided to uh, set the tripod on the same table as a belt sander so everything's shaky. Oh wait, I'm the cameraman. After you have your arrowhead made, you're gonna wanna take your same belt sander and put a nice point on some wooden dowels. These are some oak. I can't remember how long they are. I think they're about 10 inches. And you just kinda wanna make a nice point so it fits in that cone. Okay, I think you get the picture. Now you're gonna wanna put a notch in the back of it so your string actually catches when you fire. I used the Dremel and I later used the file, but I forgot to film that. Basically all you wanna do is put a notch in it so your string doesn't skip. That sucks. I've had that happen. Don't let it happen to you. Now you're gonna to wanna to attach some uh, fletchings onto it. This, this helps the arrow fly a lot straighter. As you can see, I put some notches in it. I did that off camera and I have some nice epoxy there that I'm putting in the notch to uh, 
really help those uh, fletchings stay on. Otherwise, they'll just fall off, and that's kind of useless. I made the fletchings out of leather. I was just an old leather vest that I had lying around, cut up into a bunch of little pieces, and glued on. Fun. Now you just have to do the other side with the same epoxy and even more flushings made out of the same material. I really have nothing to say here, but I felt like I should say something. After your epoxy on the fletchings is dry enough, you're going to want to attach your arrowheads. I use the same epoxy and just put a little bit in the cone, and then I just take my wooden dowel and stick it on the end like you'll see here in a few seconds once I finally get the cap on. Ah, oh, there it is. I kind of twist a little bit to make sure the epoxy is nice and even. I don't think that's necessary. But then you're going to want to make sure everything's completely straight, like you're forged your arrowheads. That's, you know, just to make sure it sticks in straight. Very important when firing a crossbow bolt into something. You don't want it to just kind of break off when it hits sideways. I've had that happen to me as well. With a pass crossbow I made. With more homing crossbow bolts. And now you're done. You're going to want to make sure you make a variety of these bolts, you know, in case of boredom. You never know when you're going to need a variety of crossbow bolts. Since we have some extra time, I'll show you how to make a nice carrying case for them. You're going to want to start with the teddy bear your ex gave you for Valentine's Day. Feel free to send the severed head to them. Then I just removed some of the stuffing and put a cardboard tube in it that I blocked one end. This makes it to where the crossbow bolts don't just start stabbing through the bottom of the teddy bear. As you see here, you can just stack them right in there. Just, you know, put, put them in. You can hold a bunch of them. It beats trying to carry them by hand. Actually, I actually really have nothing to say here. I'm just, you know, talking at this point. It's pretty obvious what I'm doing. So, yeah. Now you know how to make some medieval crossbow bolts. Go and do it for yourself. Or don't. I don't really care.